We're gonna be side laying against either Malphite or Yana. They have double AD bot. This is their only AP damage. Uh, they have 0% health damage in their draft. Wait, we're lacking some AP. No, we're not lacking AP. Guys, there's nothing to be said here. All right, all right. Alright, guys, if I farm even this game, I'm gonna be unkillable by their team. Who's gonna kill me? Nobody. Jarvan 4% of child damage. Oh, Jarvan, please don't one-shot me too fast. <laughs> Anyways, talk about the game. Alright, what do we do every game? I did this in silver, gold, platinum, emerald, diamond, and now masters. What do we do every game? Check the matchup. We're playing into Malphite. He's playing Grass Inspiration Flash Teleport. And I am Mundo with pretty much similar setup. Neither of us are very strong early game champions, but he is a little bit stronger than I am. However, again, if I can look for priority, I will look for priority. Just because my mentality is if I farm even, I am going to be stronger, right? So I want to make sure that I farm well. Farming even is winning. Going ahead in CS, game over. Falling slightly behind, have to be expected. Now take a look at the junglers. Hecarim, I would argue, is a champion that is a little bit weaker in early game in terms of skirmishing. Just generally wants to fluke here. Jarvin can look for early ganks, but he can also fluke clear. He scared my aura. We're gonna look for E start if he is not contesting me on the wave. If he is contesting me, I go Q start. Oh, I was reading chat. I was reading. Four. Oh. Nah, I'm absolutely cooked, by the way. My lane is absolutely over because I'm reading chat. I am completely done. It's alright. Well, we lose priority. Jarvan at least is pathing bolt, so we don't have to be scared of it. Right, our plan is a bit doomed, but both drones are battling to bolt. It's all right. Now my main goal is to just try and stabilize and just farm even, you know? But yeah, I can't walk up for these lasses now. It's a privilege you lose when you drop priority. He's gonna hit level two here, so I have to be careful. He's got perfect CS. I've already lost two. So yeah, we're definitely down here, but okay. We're gonna have a game that is not gonna be as easy. That's good as well for the educational part, but frustrating for my part, okay. right? And this is why your level one has to be sharp. Distracted piggy SMH SMH. Anyways, how good would you rate Aurora top? 10 to 10, we'll smack. I don't know, I think she got pretty hard nerfed though, I haven't seen her for a while. She was disgustingly broken and now she's like fine, I guess. Yeah, I'm losing a lot of blasts, right? That's just uh, the result of losing priority. I got a sneaky grass for Kim. Malvin is perfect CS at the moment. He's 25 out of 25, so yeah, we're pretty far down here. I'm trying to hard push this, but looks of it, he's not teleporting. Yeah, double cloth. I do believe I should teleport with the incentive that if I don't, I'm gonna lose a ton of XP and at least we're even with this. Smallfit is a pretty good player. As weird as that is, it's a good Malphite player. Rarity. He's teleport advantage, so I definitely have to respect that. He's still teleport, so. I gotta respect that. Ooh. I think we both hit level 6 exactly. I don't know if he's lost any XP. I'm hitting level 6 here. Got some confidence in my level of timers, right? Else I'm dead. This guy does not miss last hits, by the way. This Malphit is a very good player. Gotta give it to him. This guy is not your average master player. I can see that for sure. I have to recall now. Also, he's slow pushing towards me. If he is smart, he hard pushes here. So I don't get a reset in. But this is a uh, very nice recall by me. Because him slow pushing now is gonna lead to him having to push this wave. And this wave. So I lose nothing. Or I lose like one melee here. Oh, that's alright. Would you say this is the elo where Mundo begins to struggle? Absolutely. Especially when your opponents are good. This Malphite is very good. This Malphite is um, playing way above a master level. Like he's played an extremely clean game thus far. He's not made a single mistake. Right, it's pretty rare to see a Malphite player that picks Malphite as a blind pick. And is actually playing to win lane. Still has TP advantage. Just like give TP to the mid tier 1. Because he wanted to involve himself in the fight. It's a mistake I'll be able to punish to get at least one plate here. And that's nice. We're slightly up in tempo here, so I should be able to get the plate. You got a Bramble Vassal. If I hit him, I get anti heal applied. I don't want to fight here. The Malvin is definitely throwing at me. I do outskill him. 
Ekron does not have ult. I cannot help him. I'm going to be hard pushing the wave here. I assume my jungle is already dead because both Salaliers are collapsing. At least it's not the Malphite that got it, so I'm satisfied with that, I think. Maybe not. Maybe it's better if Malphite gets it. All right, time to recall again. You see here, I instantly make my decision to hard push my wave and get the hell out of dodge. 1100 gold because we need to get Warmox plus an extra Ruby crystal, but we're running cashback. So if I finish Warmox, I get 200 gold. That's why I need 1100 gold plus 200 from cashback. Puts me at 1300 gold. I can buy Warmox and the other Ruby crystal, and we're in a good spot here. Malphite might stay for the plate if he does so. I might get two here. Reviving then. He just gets one. He's got probably got a proxy here. Okay, I'm gonna hard push this well because he's already out. No point in chasing him. Maybe I can kill him, but he has double biscuit and flash and ult, so. Yeah, look at his farm though. He's doing amazing, right? He's doing absolutely the way he should. And yeah, like I said, he had priority level one. He's already level nine. He got the assist in the river too. I did not have that privilege. I'm gonna do a little bit of greedy play here and speed up my tempo by proxying here. It's a little bit of a cheat play, but it might secure me a plate. And I kind of need those cheesy extra gold incomes now because I'm already pretty far behind to him. He's not here yet. I need to get to Warmox ACP. That's my mindset. Okay, one is enough. Beautiful. We're still slightly behind in the XP, but we're not much. He lost the wave because of that too. I got two plates. He only has one. So we're pretty much even here. We're losing 2v1. You should go mid. I'm gonna look for plates here, bro. She should go mid. You should go mid. You had enough time to walk mid. She had more than enough time to walk mid. All right, I saw the moment. I capitalized. We got two kills. Shot in our bot lane. Had a nice TP with the Lily traps. Get some plates here. Didn't have to be top. That's why I wanted Jinx to go mid, but she didn't want that. That's all right. I'm just gonna hit both lane together because we're definitely getting this. And yeah, Syndra TP top, which I expected. So I wanted my AD carry to go mid lane there, but this is all right. We just share this. Uh, Jarvan has a full eclipse. We can get this if she hits. Now we gotta back off. This is a Malphite teleport way too deep now. All right, it's Oriana. Do flash. Oh, I griefed. Or I baited. I'm a stinky baiter. Well, we did get in the game for this. I had the Senna accidentally, but. Uh... Oof. Well, guys, I'm gonna be honest. That was a good turn, eh? Mama gets my turn, but we got a lot of mula mula. Beautiful. We should just play for these, not chase the Jarvan, I feel like, but it's okay. My Hakanim is very far out of the Jarvan. Game's looking very smooth now. I actually have a wave here to play for plates. Maybe we can get two. Might even get the full turret. Jarvan is... Okay, I'm always making a play on mid. This is again why I think we should play for this. I do believe I get this completely though. Both me and Malphite are very strong this game. The reason he's at yes, is just because of the early game though. I just kill him. I don't want to ult if I don't have to. There's a Jarvan too. I'm getting the Warmox healing. Okay. How much do I need for Hearts 2? 1.7. This is a Cannon Wave. It's gonna basically grab me there. Warmox gonna bring me to full. I still have my ult. Alright, this is why Warmox is so broken, right? I'm back to full HP without having to expend my ult, which is just so disgusting as a passive and an item, honestly. And now we have it. Ooh, a fast time too. That's why they're nerving the movement speed. Again. Again! Hakatudo, the Pendergalo. Thank you for Prime Bros. I'm sure I butchered that name in five different languages, but uh, I, th I try my best. I gotta have his turret. I thought I'm just ghosting my way out of here. I didn't even have to. I'd rather keep my ult so I can keep up pressure here. Syndra is hitting both tier 2. Cancel them both here. 
just being an annoying pig. Chinder's getting this in the meantime. I just making time for him. How much from where I demolish? Nine seconds. I might be able to die for it, but probably not worth it. Oh, we got the top, we got the bolt, we played well with the tempo, we're 10 cents per minute. I ruined so much of their tempo there. For all of them, and now they're looking into me again. They're never getting anything. They're using so much tempo on me this game, but they're not getting anything. Dude, I've I've healed like 10k HP just by having Warmogs, right? Just by having Warmogs, I dropped to like 20% HP like 3 times whilst laning here. And every time I just go back to full. Tell me again how hard two can ever be worth more than Warmogs in the early game. Well, we got top tier 2, we got bot tier 2, so now there's a lot less to play from the map. So once you get all the tier 2 turrets, I don't mind spending my tempo here for jungle camps. Like, preferably now, the order and priority is jungle camp. No, sorry, it's side waves into kills. If no kills, then jungle camps. Preferably enemy jungle camps, because if I take their jungle camps, I'll make myself stronger. And enemy jungle weaker, so it's like double whammy, right? Well, goodbye. Honey. I moved top lane here once. The reason I do is so that Moffat doesn't get this and I have teleport for this anyways. Like, we don't have to overextend here because what I'm going to do instead is I'm not going to join this fight. If I join this fight, maybe I get one or two kills. My team should just back off, right? The Moffat TP was very clear. You can ping me all you want. I don't mind that. I want to play for mid tier too because I know it's a good play here. All right, we ping the mall fight. They all... They are all already using a tempo to get away from bot side. They have to walk away all the way around to get here. So I know my player is correct. All right, we got the dragon. We got what we came for. They killed the Jarvan by already chasing deep. But look at this. I'm completely ruining their game here. They're still fighting. Again, if I move to the skirmish, maybe I get something, right? Uh, they can ping me here all they want. I shouldn't even type, because now I might die because I'm typing with them. But you get the point. There's nothing to fight for. Now they all die. For what? I die because I'm typing. See, I'll explain to you guys, just for reference. Enemy team was all the way here, right? And my TP is here. So they have to walk all the way around here. They get nothing. Dragon's already gone, they get nothing. So I just push here. But it's fine. I mean, it's out of good attention, not like, oh, I'm better. Maybe I should say why I think my play is better, not why my play is better. All right. Love people like that. It's something different though in this MMR. Massive players with their ego. We had this. If you watched my YouTube video yesterday with the with the Yon and the Karthus, it was even worse than these two. But these two are beyond delusional as well. Craziest part is this game is completely won. And they are mad that I didn't join one team fight when we got the third dragon, by the way. And they died, but we got the third dragon. There was not even an ob objective left. And it's not like I did nothing. I got the mid tier 2 and like mid tier 3 pretty much. But I got distracted by their typing. It's just crazy to me. I owe them maybe too early here. I can't kill them. Too many shoots. I'm gonna stop healing soon. I don't know, sad. Just sad. I hate these kind of players, man. Sad that they're allowed to play. I missed. Like, we were three dragons up, the whole game is winning, and there is one skirmish that doesn't go their way, and they want to FF and lose the game. Even though, I, like, I, I I was, I don't know, it, it, it's mind-numbing to me. I, I can't understand it. I genuinely can't understand it. I can't wrap my head around it, how you'd be such a terrible human being. When, when you're wrong as well, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand how your ego can be that big. That's sad. Use all their ults. Ooh. 
We won the game, but I don't know. I feel so dissatisfied. I'm gonna add them both. Ask them to come in the stream. If they want to go on Discord, I'm really down to share my perspective and show them why they're both wrong and why my play is correct. Also, Sindra, if you're in the stream now, again, if you have a different opinion, type it to me in the, in like in the client. Both you and Hackerim were wrong, making a bad play, and then you're flaming me for it, right? Which is just something I completely dislike and I just don't want people to do. Even then, I tried to communicate it too. But you guys, like, you were genuinely toxic. So where's the third dragon? Was it this? No. The gameplay is here. All right, so I'm fairly certain you're here. Uh, you don't have to show yourself. I really don't mind. I don't want anybody to be toxic to you as well. But take a look at the game position in this play, right? So this wave is pushed in. Moffat has to collect it. He is stuck. I have that's tempo. I can always TP weeks. in. I was that referring to that in the game as well. Star Shadow, I think you were tier one. I have tempo over Malphite and I'm walking here. The dragon is already gone. Now, what's super important to notice here about this position is that enemy team is all four around both sides. So their, their tempo is complete dog here. If they want to defend this mid-tier two turret, they have to walk all the way around here to defend it which they are already too late. Look at my position. I'm going to be first here, and I already have to turn it. We don't have to take this fight because our tempo is already terrible. Now, if you want to take this fight, 4v4, you guys win. I was very aware, well aware of that. Here, this fight is good. Now, we're, we see this teleport. I'm already pinging away. Where should I TP in here? And for what should I TP in? The fight is over here. Get out. All you have to do right now is get out. Wait, Sindra go this? Does he want to go Discord? If he wants to go Discord, I'm fine with that too. But again, I don't want anybody to throw hate. Yo, you're a Sindra. You're the Syndra, right? You don't mind if I use your voice so they can hear you on stream? Ultimately, that's the idea, right? Anybody my wolf, I'm permabanning you. We're talking about the third dragon fight here. I'll share my perspective first. I think that's the best way to approach it. Then you can tell me your perspective. Uh, wait, and wait. See... One, one question. I, I think I got your perspective and like you're kind of right about it. The problem there, which I see is if you go to the... Like you can like elaborate. The thing is we do dragon. Can you go to the dragon real quick? Um, like after the dragon, you're right. Like we don't have to foster play, right? But the TP is coming in um, in the moment that we are like engaging, right? Wait, pause right now. Pause right now. Yeah. So you see, the TP is coming in. So it's so lucky, right? This is like not flex five v five. This is like not um, something where you like just like instantly is reacting perfectly, right? So like in my mind, I'm thinking. Um, but my mind is there. It's like I have pretty good macro experience. I'm not like the best micro player. My the idea is UTP somewhere, some somewhere around the dragon pit, like the like the Mundo. You see like our control over there, and uh, then we can five uh, fight uh, five v five. Like that's my general idea. The play here right now is go go go. Right? I can understand we your point that it makes sense to go mid and let you just push and go off. But right now, you see the Chinks running in. You see the Nidalee running in the Charvin, right? Changla, the hacker. In that moment, in Zulu queue especially, I don't think like people are gonna react if instantly um, to go back there. So the play is to go here, right? In 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 comp play, I would 100% understand your point. It would be better probably here, cause of tempo, to go mid here and like just let you to push the turret. Especially like you 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 are way stronger than Malfit, right? Like way stronger. So if you would TP here at the exact time as Malfit, we probably still would win the team fight. So that you can like. There's like two ways like how you can play that, right? What was kind of annoying to me is why I started pinging and I'm sorry about that. Is cause you like, um, in chat it sounded like you were so certain about that there's one play and it's a little bit annoying in solo queue. Like if someone just types, right? Um, that, that, that there's like just this one play and we should like, we are all dumb basically. And that's what like annoyed me. And that's why I pinged. I'm sorry about that. Um, but okay. in my opinion- Can I, can I say something? Yeah, sure. Or, uh, yeah, yeah okay. sure. So uh, you, you're talking like a lot of points. So I wanted to let you finish, but uh, two things yeah. here. So one thing I want to reverse. So I, I didn't say a single word until I started getting spam pinged by both you and Hackerin, right? I didn't say like my play is correct. I said, I'm like, we, we can talk about it, but mm. I was getting spam pinged by both you and Hackerim when okay. uh, I still see. Uh, and also, so, so there is that. I think it, it wasn't the reverse. I didn't start typing before you guys started ping. It was reversed, right? You guys started ping and then I started saying something. Okay, then, and, then I was wrong about that. Sorry. Uh, and then the second thing is, I can see your perspective with saying it's a solo queue environment. So if a fight happens, we just want to commit to it. Uh, I can kind of see how we are committed here, but at the same time, the amount of reaction we have to this Malphite TP is immense, right? So saying it's a competitive game uh, between competitive and solo queue, I can see your perspective. I just think here, logically, from my view, right? This play is already over. We got the dragon 
And right now, all of their tempo with four people here is towards both sides where there's nothing for them to gain. And the whole map is open. If you guys move mid here, I push top. Or if I just move mid and like th their map is completely done here. Like th they're, they're, they're stuck here. They're completely out of tempo. There's nothing to play for. Marvin's TPing in. There's no reason to commit to this fight. So we can say I should TP here to like, like salvage this fight. But at the same time, my thought process here is I just ping you guys away multiple times, right? I was pinging already in advance as well. I pinged three times here. And my idea is to just push mid here. We don't have to go deeper. Yeah, yeah. We don't have to, 100%. Like, they get caught here, right? Can you, go, like, go back 10 seconds? Like, my my play there, right? I, like, I, I, I saw the TP, so that's why I spaced top bots. My idea is either you TP instantly or we go for, like, some macro play like you do. But that's, again, something that won't happen. So, look, you wait, pause right now. Like, see? The Chinks, like, they are so committed, they don't even realize the TP is coming in, right? So, like, this play is over. Um, If you continue this play, like, just continuous. Why I, like, I think, I think uh, like, why I pinged is... Wait, pause. One second. Right now I see you middle, right? And I still think we can fight this. Like the Hackerim, if you look at the Hackerim, he's like outside. We have a good flank angle, like possible flank angle if they chase us down into us. What I meant by communication before is like, right here you just push mid. I I didn't see a ping and I don't think you pinged it in game. So my idea is like, I didn't check the minimap for, for like a second. That's why I didn't see you walk up to the Druid and like um, um, harassing it. Um, if you like let the con play continue, I think if you are there, we would win this team fight too. We don't have to commit it, but I think if we like ace them there, it's better than one turret. But that's like, that's objective. It can be like, like, right? It can okay, be like so here I do have to just straight up disagree with you. Your other point, I can agree with you that TPing there can be the better play because it's like an solo queue environment, right? Mm -hmm. But here in every shape and form, I disagree with you. Hey, wait, can you um, like play it at least? Like go on. Well, before we get there, because yeah. here is where I have to make my decision, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, what I mean, like, regardless if we're playing a solo queue game or a competitive game, uh, I believe the most important quality for you to have as a player is to make good potential plays in terms of odds. If you're making yeah, high 100%. odds plays, you're going to be consistent. Yeah. There is a 100% guarantee that I am getting this tier 2 turret, resetting wave, getting tempo for the next turn as well. Because if I push this out, right, and push this all the way in, Enemy team has to recall. They have nothing to play for here. And I'm 100% of the time getting something here. Sure, Nidley and Jinx dying sucked, but we got the dragon. We already got what we came for here to begin with. And all their tempo is still used to both sides. Akram mm -hmm. doesn't have ult. That's one thing I noticed here too. For me, there is no incentive to ever move here when I'm already ahead in the play. It's like, I don't know what a good analogy is, but I'm already like two steps ahead of them. And then I have to walk here for a potential that could be good but in a different world i just join you and i die because i don't know what ultimates they have here i don't know what summoners they have i'm salvaging a bad play in my perspective and there's no way that i should bend over backwards to salvage your guys's bad play of taking a fight here that has no merit we gain nothing from it when i'm already set to get this guaranteed yeah i can see this i can i can see this point uh, i also think a fight there could potentially lead into something more um if like you play what? it out just play it out i know that like Right now, I can see you play, right? But we have like kind of a trap here, and I think if like if you move, you are such a powerhouse right now. You are way stronger than everyone there. We don't like my. I know my fit ulti doesn't have like is out right because I saw it like, and we have like him trapped a little bit. So my idea was you come here. I just didn't see that you like because right, I'm focused on this play right now. Like the same way you are committed on your play, right? Which yeah. is a turret, right? I still think we can do something here because I still have my ulti left. Um, I have like good positioning to kite away from Senna um, and Oriana. My idea was you are coming. I just didn't see you moving. I can uh, but, but I, like, but I can uh, like it probably like my bad. Um, I just like want you to understand why why I went went for this play. Um, was mainly because I thought I have agency from you. Um, was probably the wrong I play. That, by the way, I completely huh? understand that. And I don't mind that, right? I don't mind you having the incentive or the play to go here. Like, yeah. I don't mind it at all. But uh, one one thing I wanted to add on as well is let's say we kill the Malphite here. What does that lead to? And uh, the, the thing is, question, not if we kill the Malphite. The turret is 100% better. What if we kill their team? Cause like they don't they, they don't have Oriana ulti they might like they they step up now for 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 Malfit, right they want to save him he's kind of no trapped he there. just flashes up like sorry to interrupt you but if I were to move here they just walk away and nothing happens okay Malphite okay can okay. flesh out nothing happens they're not gonna commit to that fight and even if they do I so mean, you think cause cause you so you think cause they see you right now in middle turret that they don't move or like he doesn't flash out yeah because there's like from my perspective here there's nothing to gain 
for them to stay here and mm. neither for you as well oh i approach okay. this yeah. and i i, can I think that. this is the 100 percent correct play again i'm already getting something from them entering their tempo and then what your play should be here is not playing for this no, you probably just go on this side. end Exactly. You push this out, you re reset this wave, and then we have tempo through mid, tempo yeah, yeah, through yeah. wave, and we play for Baron games over. Yeah, agree, agree. Like about that play, I 100% agree. Um, yeah. After okay, seeing it I'm now, not bad for me to get flamed, I mean, this Hackram literally went AFK and then said I'm supposed to lose this game for making the correct call. I don't mind that, but to me, in game, this was all very tilting. You spamming me multiple yeah, times as well. I, I spamming you like no, not before this. I like I'm sorry about that. Like I tilted. The thing is, like my fit showed up a couple of time mid side, so I was. Like from my perspective, I was a little bit tilted. Middle, middle is like one versus three, one versus four lane most of the time. So I know I shouldn't be tilted there. That's that was my bad one percent. That's okay, bro. Spending. I don't mind it. I also admire that you are that you came into Discord first of all. We just had a nice talk. You yeah, no. say, you know, I, I think you had a very respectful manner. Thank you also for the good chat. And yeah, the only thing I can give with it is just. I mean, Shuts I guess be open-minded, right? <laughs> I was also open-minded to the idea that you were correct here, but when reviewing it together, I am I would make this play 100% of the time, every time. Yeah. That play, I understand. The TP, you also said, I think, like, um, like, I, like I'm I play, like, Prime League, right? I don't know if you know, know it. It's, like, a German Division League, and I, I played, think, like... like I, I think played it, the highest league in Prime League. I don't know. Oh, yeah, then you're way better than me anyways. I'm the, <laughs> then you're way better than me anyways. Yeah, and I think, like, there we would have communicated to TP, probably, or, like, match the TP, or you would have, like, um, like let us know that you don't want a TP, so, like, the Chinks wouldn't commit so hard to the play, right? It's, like, different ways we could have gone about that. But, yeah, I understand your point that, like, chasing there after after the Dragon is, uh, like, after the TP for Malfit, we don't have to commit for more and can go for, like, a high percentage um, or, like, high-value play in the mid lane or, like, just let you push. Um, again, it's just solo queue though. <laughs> Sadly, yes, you can't That's do true. this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ultimately, I, the best thing I can do is ping you guys off. Yeah, they, they, their their map is in, in shambles here. They have nothing to do anymore, right? Yeah. They have nothing to. They can't even use this way for anything. They mm. uh, they are they are out of the game here. Can you just like Everyone wait? Can you just like one because I didn't remind it. Can you like uh, just play it out? I just want to see what I do after like the how I commit to it. I just want to see it. Like after the Malfit and the fucking like this for example like Jinx flashing out here would have also been huge. Yep. We uh -uh. see as well like imagine your Malfit here. What do you do, right? You have to go yeah. all the way here like and and their team as well. They, they I can't I can't wait, can you like lock on me? I just want to see like when I should have stopped. So probably when I went into Dragon Pit already it was kind of too much. Yeah, don't need overwatch guys. Yeah, okay. Nice chat though. We had a good talk. Thank you yeah. for coming in and uh, nice. wish you an amazing remainder every day and a good weekend, Chief. Same, same. Bye bye. Yo, see ya. There we go. I was able to showcase you guys why I was so adamant that my play was honestly correct. The fact that I got spam picked after that play and then Hakram went AFK for five minutes, came back and said Mundo deserves to lose is, it was crazy to me. I genuinely couldn't wrap my hand around it. GM boss, could you make a poll to make chat decide whether I should do my homework or watch Phantom Mentos tie? Bro, work on your priorities first. How about, I don't, I don't need to make a poll. It's Friday morning right now. I'm sure you've got a good reason to make your homework first. Get, see, this is how I like it, right? And advice is easier, easier to give. Thank you for the 100 bits. But the thing is, you'll feel much better getting your homework done first. Do the most important priorities that you have to, like, do first. And then you can go into the weekend and watch the remainder of my stream without feeling any guilt, first of all. Because that's how I cope with it. I felt like a sense of guilt, right? Whenever I wouldn't do my main priorities. And like I said, you're going to be able to go into your weekend knowing that you have done the task you set out to do. So my recommendation for you, first, do your homework. Get that homework done. Then watch my stream. All right, guys. So we're going to go to full educational. Again, showcasing that the concept that I've used all throughout the ELOs we've played. Silver. We've went through silver, gold, platinum, emerald, diamond. Now we're master. All right. Master 200 LP. It's already like, what? The top 1% of all players? Maybe even top half percent? And I want to showcase that the the steps that I'm doing in the Lord of Mars are still the same. So what are the two steps that I always do when loading into the game? First things first is I check my opponent's setup. So I check his summoners, Flesh Ignite. Facial's resolve, for example, if he was running Conqueror, he'd be more scary. And I see that he is running Ignite and Teleport, right? So that's already important to note that I have a Teleport advantage in the early game. And he, of course, has more kill push to Ignite. Then the second thing we do is compare both junglers. They have a relatively ganking heavy jungler and so do we. And then what was the first step? 
to know how we should approach our early game wave states. It's the warp down, so I see where enemy jungle is starting. If we know where enemy jungle is starting, I know how I'm supposed to approach my early game wave states. And now, talking about the matchup, we're both relatively weak early game champions, but I will argue that Garen is simply still stronger than Mundo because Mundo is really, like, really weak in the early game. Now, if this guy is not walking with the wave, I could look for priority because priority theoretically is still good, even though I shouldn't get it because I get my level up timers faster. I'm not going to use it to get aggressive traits, but just getting my level up faster allows me to farm for save. I don't uh, have to, you know, give up any last hits. And that's why I would still want priority and I can decide to early game crash. So now it looks like Hecarim, or sorry, Rek'Sai is pathing towards bot. And we know that because he's starting topside, so he's going to be pathing into bot. We do not see Elise starting. Oh, there's the Elise. She's invading. That was a really good word by my Rek'Sai. I cannot help him, unfortunately, because my champion is very weak. And because I don't see Garen, I'm going to select my E here. The reason I select my E is because it gives me 15 more AD. As you can see on the means, I deal more damage. He's looking to posture aggressive. And I want to E him and the means here to kind of get this priority, you see? And again, I don't want to use this priority for anything aggressive. I don't look... Oh, I don't want to look for necessarily any aggressive trades. But I just want to be able to farm for free. I lost one melee for fun. Not sure if he has Q or E. Looks like he has Q. I'm fine to trade here because I can get two auto attacks in. So did he. If Garen moves, it's a blunder by him. Because I'm going to be hard pushing here. So he can't use potion too. And I waited a little bit longer on purpose. And again, you see, I'm not really training aggressively. I just look for the priority to get my level timer faster to not have to concede any last hits. Now, Garen could theoretically and should theoretically get the priority here. But you see, this guy was late to lane. I adapted. That is the most important skill to learn, right? So I, theoretically, I should concede prior level one. But the way this guy was playing allowed me to get priority. And thus, I look for my level up faster. And then, oh, I missed like there. I'm level 3 to level 2 though, so it's still a beneficial trade for me. And uh, remember, he's playing Flesh Ignite, right? So he does not have Teleport to get like his free out of jail card here. I can move here, I guess. The wave is pushing back into me, so me moving is not a bad thing. Let's say both of us would move. But I don't really want to fight here. Like, I just want to kind of lane here, man. I don't really want to fight. Because Garen could just push this in and then I can't do anything about it. I'm not going to move here. I would lose too much. I don't like early games like this. Looks like in the mid lane, the Syndra is also losing from this. So I just think for the wrap off, it's just way too much, man. I'm going to try and hold the wave here. So the Garen is going to be losing by, by moving here. So what I'm doing here is dragging the wave. And the Garen is going to move here. I just think this fight was terrible. Okay. Yeah, Garen gets the kill on Syndra, I assume. Unless she's faker. I think I'm justified in not moving there. Garen's game is over now. Because he never got the wave to crash. I'm not gonna even respond to what this Rek'Sai is saying. I care about more about my wave state here than a rep buff. By the way, I care much more about my wave state here than a rep buff. Remember, Garen has just lost a full wave already. And now he's losing a full cannon wave. Now, early game waves, like losing a full wave is so ridiculously snowballing. Because it is 200 gold worth of gold to lose this cannon wave, right? Six, uh, seven means in total. But then also the EXP. And the EXP is the real crucial factor. And so now I would just say that this, yeah, this Garen's gonna have a very rough time coming back in the game here because he's already behind in his first four waves. I mean, his wave set is absolutely horrific here. I'll lose the cannon here probably, but I get my reset in. The reason I reset now is so that I can get the bounce in safely as well. And it looks like Cannon actually stayed alive. You're kidding me. That is not a minus one. I guess it is though. I think the Garen is gonna proxy. That's why you see me hold the wave like this. Yep, I just wanna push fast. Maybe I can hold him off a little bit, but probably not. But yeah, I mean, we're in a very stable position now. Uh, I'm very satisfied with this position. Uh, we've lost nothing worth of XP. Or did we? Maybe we did lose one thing. Else we get level 6 here exactly. Again, right, my thought process there is I care more. Okay. I care more about my uh, wave state than like a, a rep buff. So now we're just in a good spot. He's going to be walking around. We're 20 CS up. And, I mean, I am very satisfied with this, right? Again, it's all about early game waves planning. Core fundamentals, the early game jungle tracking. I mean, it was a very weird scenario. But, yeah, I don't want to move there in, 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 a, in a game state like that. I just care more about my own wave state. I mean, this Rek'Sai seems to be very uh, toxic, flaming everybody. I'm just going to hit the death and, and just focus on myself here. I'm very sad. Like, sometimes people also ask me, what's, like, the difference between a challenger and a massive player? There's a lot, right? There's a lot. But one key difference is decisions making based on consistent outcomes me moving to the Rek'Sai, they're fighting for a rep buff or could have turned out very good for me 
But in a lot of scenarios, I gain nothing there. And if I stayed in my laning phase the way I did, I get ahead 100% of the time. That is very often going to be a key difference between a challenger and like a master or a grandmaster player. I'm making decisions based on good ults, percentual ults, that are bound to be good plays, right? And yeah, now I am 20 CS up in a matchup where realistically I shouldn't. The outcome was good. Garen even didn't end up getting a kill. But let's say Garen got the kill on my Syndra. I would still be ahead. Uh, but look at my CS now, right? I'm in a very beautiful position. And that's just because I've been thinking ahead of my wave states. And now I get to play two. And reminder, if you go even on Mundo, you're winning. If you go ahead, you're hard winning. Okay, we're in a good spot here. Do my farm, right? Again, uh, that's a combination of last hitting and, of course, your uh, fundamentals. He doesn't get slowed by my Q there because he had uh, phasers, right? So he gets slow resistance. But again, guys, you saw this early game, right? I am still 20 cents up just because of the early game. And it looks like I've farmed very well, like above average, because I have 80 cents, I've made it 8. And yeah, having that on the champion like Mundo is a giant blessing. Yeah, I just set up another reset here with the intent that Garen cannot hard push this and this before I'm back. So I pretty much lose what, not, lose nothing so with the Euro Prime. The only problem for me this game is that their bot lane is pretty fed. Uh, the, the Zeri, right? Which is hard for me to deal with, but I do have Ghost later on. Now I'm gonna go wash Warmox, and I have my Teleport in about two minutes. So my thought process right now is to stay in lane until I have a thousand gold, because I need 200 gold extra to be able to afford another Ruby Crystal, because I also have cash back once I purchase the Warmox. This is massive. Absolutely need to play, like, basically slow down their snowballing. And I've only lost two melee minions, but I got the full reset in. I have my W on. Beautiful. I can get wave priority permanently right now. I have a giant item lead. He's only have 1400 gold spent. I have about 2k gold spent. 3k gold even. No, 2 point. No, no, no. I'm bugging. I have a lot of gold spent, right? So I have a giant item lead. And I want to try and see if I can get another plate here. And if I lose half my HP for it, it's quite all right. As long as I don't die, the outcome is going to be good for me. And I'm gonna ult, maybe it's a little too early, but it just, the thing is, okay, that ult was definitely a little too overkill, but the reason I ult is to just stay full HP, if I never, you know, below 50%, he never has execution range, and I wanted to greet a little bit for the plate to speed up my progression curve towards the Warmox. Remember, I need a thousand gold, just getting that one plate already makes me basically way faster, right? Now, this cannon wave grants you around 200 gold, so it's gonna put me at 900, and then I just need one more wave afterwards, I will base teleport back, and around minute 11, we have our Warmox, and we're gonna keep playing for plates, getting the full turret, and like I said, going even is winning. I've been doing so. I'm very farmed this game. We've done an amazing job with that. And if I keep this up, I'm just going to be an absolute menace. Oh, Elise is invading. I, if I have Rek'Sai wins this, it's massive because that's also going to mean we get grubs. But it looks like Rek'Sai has a full item, whereas Elise only has a Sheen, which I think is an absolutely useless component, truthfully. Let's just play for this. I think it's way better to play for this. And then I'll base. I get my Warmox now. And uh, well, guys, that is as about as theoretical as you can get a laning phase, right? I've explained to you guys every step of the way. I'm gonna look for another plate here. Because we have Warmox now. So the more trades I take, it literally just benefits me because I have the Warmox. Put him at 1 HP. We're gonna get 6 grubs. And we're in an amazing position here. But I've explained every step of the way. And remember, have you guys seen me struggle in landing phase ever since I didn't move towards my jungle, right? When the Elise and Rexha was fighting. Rexha was calling me an idiot, yada, 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 was flaming me. But I told you guys, this is going to put me in a good position 100% of the time. Again, this is the difference that you'll very often find between challenger players and other elos, is I go for those consistent plays and I am always in a good spot. Look at my farm. And the Garen has never been able to contest me because first of all, I got a second wave crash off, right? And then on the bounce, the Garen moved, died, and then... Uh, since forever now, I am just perpetually ahead. It was 20 CS, slowly got more plates too, and I mean, now I have a full turret, and I'm like 2k gold ahead to this Garen. That is probably here dead again. Well, kudos to my team. Never mind. They did not die. But it's okay, it's a recall now, and I have a full wave on me, and I'm just gonna keep expanding my lead the way I am. Now, there's no point for me to go bot, especially when there is a fat Zeri that is bot lane right now, even though I've gotten the tier 1. And that's because even if I go bot lane right now, the Zeri is just gonna clear the wave and I can't really progress. So we're gonna stay top until I get the tier 2, but it looks like I already have it, because reminder, the more HP you have, the more AD I get, because of my E passive, and the more damage my demolish procs do, so... I mean, uh, we're in a, a little bit of a disgusting position here. He just got close towards his uh, first item, I got two turrets. So now, I'm gonna do after this recall is I always want to make sure I've got priority to play so he cannot retaliate with plates. And I want to move mid here, and then either go back to top if nothing happens, or I get some mid plates. All right, he doesn't want to listen. For me, it's worth more to stay here as well. Yes, Garen's going to get plates as well, but so will we. And it's just going to make it easier for me to expand my lead here, because we're going to get all these plates, and Garen shouldn't get everything. 
Again, preferably my Syndra goes top here. It's better uh, for her to be top. But she's not listening, and that's all right. I'll have the full turret. Syndra won't. If they get this turret, it is actually good for me. The reason as to why is because now I can go bot, knowing that enemy bot lane is not going to go bot lane anymore. Please, me bot, take wave, and let me. The reason I need to be bot is so I can play for the bot tier 1, right? Makes a lot of sense. And uh, Zeri goes mid. Again, I said this would happen. She has two items already. She's ultra fed. So am I, though. Now we've got top tier 1, top tier 2. Elise is here. We're going to play for a dragon soon. And... I mean, I don't get a wave anymore to play for uh, this, but I have a shutdown, and that's because I'm actually ridiculously fed, right? Uh, I can silent against both Garen and Rice. They're just harder to kill because they're both playing with phase rush, but I'm pretty much unkillable to them. And I think uh, my next item has to be magic resist because I'm going to sideline against Rice at least a lot here. Okay, we almost have it. I'm not going to push my lead here more than that. I'm very satisfied with that. Next demolish, I will have it. They are playing for Herald, okay? Because if they move to top side, they're playing for Herald for sure. I would want my team give Herald take drag i communicate that because we don't need this herald but this would already put us in a position where i never have to team fight just don't team fight i don't think they should fight the two items zeri unless they can kill her if they win this fight i think it's game over rice teleported in I, again i'm not moving by the way i can get a full tier one and order tier two and i'm gonna get my demolish in what 11 seconds i can use that for the tier two i have six drops i'm i play this game it's going too smooth it's going way too smooth right but everything here is replicable besides maybe my last thing right my last thing is going to be better than i mean almost any of you because i'm a chronic league of legends player but everything that i've done regarding my wave setups my decision making my um and, and my macro i mean this is a master little game guys and uh all i'll say is uh first four waves indeed <laughs> i mean here it went a little too smooth but i explained to you guys my thought processes why i go where and when to go where remember i said i gotta stay top on because there's a fed zeri bot and uh well i went mid lane i gave garen some plates top and i mean the rest is history i am ultra fed but yeah my team is doing well and uh let's just say that i'm zero 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 but i'm ultra farmed i got all the plates i have more gold than the eight kills every i am on top for this game I don't think you want to fight with me, by the way. Maybe they do. Damn. I died way faster than I anticipated. But, like, half that was true damage. That's a 1400 true damage ultimate. Okay, I just got 1400 ultimate damage on me. My bad, I guess. We're doing the vegan uh, Mundo gameplay again. Like, zero kill participation Mundo gaming. Well, now I have kill participation, I guess. That sucks. You don't have to come. Don't take my gold. Just go mid. I want to get a little bit more money. But, I mean, this game has been very replicable, right? Everything that I use in all my teaching has been shown here. Your early game fundamentals, your reset timers. I mean, CSing, obviously. Then macro regarding turrets. Some things are going to be harder to replicate, but I feel like a lot of the concepts that I've shown this game are easily replicable for you guys in your games too. Renduin's goes crazy this game, no? Yeah, it's pretty good. But I still think unending is probably better with the healing. They also don't really have... I mean, they have anti here, I guess. Is that a flash? Tarek ult used. Just gonna hit the front. And I move to the back line. Penta. No penta. And I'll move here. He still has phase rush. He hasn't propped it. I bet. I'm gonna go for it, bro. You're not escaping me. There's a phase rush. Goodbye, buddy. Ain't that a beautiful, theoretical, accurate Mundo game? I am unstoppable. I got six rubs. Garen moved in the early game. Didn't resolve to anything. From that point onwards, I just knew the game's absolutely over. Like, it's gonna be unplayable for them. Alright, guys. There you go. Full educational game. Every concept I use in a Silver Elo would be applicable here, too. I one-shot this guy. Nice Q. Anyways, let's check my Draven AD. 340. Okay, I need to I need to I need to show him that he's a little bit of a rookie. Get off me. Nice AD, Draven. I got 420. Ah <sighs> GG!